The Chase Freedom Unlimited is one of those credit cards that offers a compelling combination of flexible redemption options, rich rewards, and a welcome offer that is fairly healthy all for an annual fee of $0. The most compelling reason though why most people will own this card is for its rewards rate. This card offers a rewards rate of 1.5% on base spending. Many other credit cards are going to offer a rewards rate of 1% on general spending. 1.5 versus 1 might not feel like a huge difference on the outset, but that actually means you're earning 50% more rewards on those general purchases. This card also offers some bonus points in certain other categories as well. Now, there are other credit cards out there that will offer BAFO rewards in certain categories. I'm talking about things like 4% on dining or 6% on groceries, but what happens is those cards typically offer just 1% on everything else. And with this card, you're getting 1.5% on pretty much everything you buy. So it might seem like the obvious choice to use one of those fancy grocery credit cards that earns far more when you're buying groceries, but the answer is not that obvious. Because what if you're buying groceries at the corner bodega? Does that count as that grocery rewards because you bought groceries there? What if you're going to a coffee shop and you're buying a sandwich? Does that count as a restaurant or is that going to be categorized separately as a coffee shop. It can be really tricky to tell. And if you're spending all these purchases there and you don't get those rewards rates, well, that can feel deflating. What's nice about the Chase Freedom Unlimited is you know you're getting a good return on everything you buy rather than a great return on some things and a met return on everything else. And the reality is most spending you're doing likely will not fall into those bonus categories anyway. For example, my hairdresser accepts credit cards, but I'm probably only going to get that general spend. There are likely no credit cards out there that offer bonus categories on hair salons. At least I haven't seen one. So if I charge my hair cut to the Chase Freedom Unlimited, then I'm getting that 1.5% back versus what would very likely be 1% back on pretty much any other credit card out there. If you're the type of person who just wants to have one credit card and know that you're getting a good rate on your spending, this is a great card for you. But besides the keep it simple crowd, this card is also really appealing to the people who are the rewards maximizers, the people who wanna make sure that they're getting the most credit card rewards points out of their spending, and they also are willing to have multiple credit cards in order to do so. That's because while this card is technically a cashback card and you can take the points that you've earned and exchange them for a value of one cent per point, these points can be potentially even more valuable if you merge them with other credit cards and you redeem them certain ways. The points, which are called Chase Ultimate Rewards Points, can be transferred to other credit cards you might hold. I'm talking about cards like the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. When you hold those cards and send your points from the Chase Freedom Unlimited to those cards, then you can use them to send to transfer partners, things like airlines and hotels, and you can turn your points into frequent flyer miles and hotel points where they're potentially even more valuable. You can also use them to book travel in the Chase Ultimate Rewards travel portal. And again, when you use them with other cards like the Chase Sapphire Preferred, they're also worth even more when booked with travel in that portal as well. Now, this can certainly be complicated. I've got other videos explaining how those transfers work, but just know if you're someone who is a points maximizer who really wants to get the most value, then using this card in tandem with others like the Chase Sapphire Preferred is a really smart move. I do want to tell you about some of this card's drawbacks. The first one is that it has a foreign transaction fee. If you travel internationally like me, then sure, you might hold this card in your wallet, but just don't bring it with you on those international trips. Otherwise, you'll get hit with an unnecessary fee, which is annoying considering there are so many other credit cards that don't charge foreign transaction fees. The other thing that I just want to call out is that you're earning a good rewards rate on your general spending, but you're not earning that great rewards rate in other categories. So I talked about the cards that earn 4% on dining or 6% at groceries. If you're someone who really only spends money on your credit card at restaurants and nowhere else, then the reality is you're probably better off getting another credit card that just earns a great rewards rate on dining. 
That said, this is the kind of card that you might use if you're the person who wants to keep it simple and get a good rate on everything that you buy, or the person who is that ultimate rewards maximizer who wants to use this card with others like the Chase Sapphire Preferred. For someone who wants to get a good rewards rate on everyday spending, this is the card that you'll likely have top of wallet. I'm Sally French, a credit cards writer at NerdWallet. For even more information about the Chase Freedom Unlimited, including how to maximize those transfers or to learn more about extra bonus categories, visit nerdwallet.com.